Okay, so uh, mentoring youth, the FOSS strategy we've been looking for. <laughs> okay, so if we're going to do this, uh, we're going to talk about uh, four individuals that have been involved in, in Sugar Labs. Uh, one uh, is Nathan. Um, uh, one is, his name is India, Anindya. Um, Emily and Ibium. Come on, you're, there's no wrong answers. I mean, <laughs> the camera's not on you. <laughs> um, so this is uh, my student, uh, Nathan. Um, uh, quite a while ago. I'm looking at this photo. So this photo was taken at Libre Learn Lab, and uh, uh, Mariah's here who uh, you know, basically organized this. Uh, it happened um, this year that it happened was in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I invited some of my students. Um, Nathan is on the left in the yellow shirt. Um, uh, one of my other students is uh, the one right in, in front of the computer. And then Cynthia Solomon, who's uh, uh, one of the co-authors of the Logo programming language, is uh, the one um, standing behind uh, both those boys um, looking at what they created on the computer. Um, and that day, they were doing a Music Blocks uh, uh, workshop. Um, fast forward. Um, Um, this is Nathan just uh, last week, just a few days ago. Um, so um, what was his journey like? So, you know, Nathan um, was using, uh, well, first he started as a student of mine um, learning guitar um, about eight years ago, um, probably like just, you know, a few months or so before that picture was taken. Um, then uh, he learned uh, piano with another teacher. Um, he's still... Uh, studies guitar with me, um, and then he studied uh, Music Blocks, um, which is one of the visual programming languages that Sugar Labs um, curates, um, that I co-authored along with Walter Bender um, for teaching kids uh, programming and musical concepts, for exploring, you know, um, a lot of uh, great ideas. Um, and uh, what he's doing in this picture is he's uh, contributing now to the development of music blocks itself. Um, he was, uh, you know, writing up bug reports. Um, we set up like a development environment, and he was, uh, you know, learning Git. Um, he was checking out different branches. Um, he was. He's also uh, been making lesson plans uh, for teachers to use, um, and he's actually doing a really good job of it. Um, so he's 14 years old now. Um, so, I'm very proud of, uh, you know, of how his journey is going so far, um, and he does it with grace. Um, it, um, he uh, is just really awesome. Um, so let's go on to the the next person in our our story. Getting the hang of this. <laughs> what? I guess we were wrong. Okay, now now it's what we thought it was. <laughs> okay, so this is in India. So in India came with to us um, to participate in Google Summer of Code um, this year. Um, we have. Um, 14 interns um, that we're mentoring uh, through Google Summer of Code. Um, he started in 2020, um, and uh, he uh, is quite incredible. Um, at the at the end of his internship, um, he decided to uh, make an entirely new version of one of the projects that we've uh, been working on. So. Um, he basically has, uh, within just a few years, become a project lead. 
Um, and uh, last year and this year, he's been a mentor to other uh, Google Summer of Code students, um, and just recently, you know, you know, gave a, you know, a, you know, shared um, his journey um, in a in a video interview um, to help others, you know, who are interested in participating in, uh, you know, Google Summer of Code or just in general with, you know, Sugar Labs development, um, and. Uh, he uh, is finishing his uh, his master's. Um, he is uh, also, you know, working um, at uh, various companies. Um, it's uh, quite incredible what, what he's doing. Yeah. Do. <laughs> Um, Emily, uh, so um, I've told a few people here this, but I'm really sad um, that we don't have Google Code in anymore. Um, we participated in Google Code in for a few years. Um, Google, if you're not familiar with Google Code in, um, it was similar to Google Summer of Code, um, where you'd have youth uh, work on on different free software projects. Um, but this was mainly targeted at ages uh, 14 through 17, um, or maybe it was 13 through 17. Um, Emily, I believe, at this time was uh, 14 years old, and uh, she didn't have a lot of coding experience, um, but uh, she uh, has made a lasting contribution. <laughs> um, and uh, so the, the mouse that is in Music Blocks, and I can show you it later, uh, you know, she designed it, and you can see the progression of it <laughs> um, in this blog post that she created, um, and uh, we still use it to this day. So it's exactly the same way as uh, she created it, like, uh, six or seven years ago. Um, Ibium um, is uh, really interesting. So um, Ibium started with uh, one laptop per child. Um, so um, he was, uh, and still is, living in Nigeria. Uh, he was living in Nigeria at the time that uh, they brought the old PC, the one laptop per child computer, which runs uh, the Sugar desktop environment on it. Um, and uh, I just interviewed him like a, a month ago, um, and he told his whole story about he got how he got started. Um, so he got one of these laptops. Um, he thought it was just incredible, all the, the different things he could do with it. You know, a few times he stayed up all night with friends, you know, hacking on it. Um, he thought that the fact that you could, you know, with the push of a button, see the source code was, you know, really a novel thing because that's a feature of the Sugar Desktop environment. You can press a button, and whatever application you're, you're using. Um, you can uh, see the source code for that application. Um, and that helped him, in turn, learn you know, more about programming. Um, and uh, uh, you know, now he's one of the maintainers for um, a lot of the, the packages for, uh, for Sugar. Um, so definitely a success story um, as well. So. Many, many more success stories, but I had to kind of focus on just a few. Yes. <laughs> okay, so what do these uh, individuals all have in common? Um, so, um, so one thing is each one of these individuals is not only using free software, um, you know, but you know, contributing to free software. Um, each person you know, here uh, has been mentored um, and continues to receive uh, support from our community um, toward their own personal growth. Um, you know, each uh, of these people um, has had you know, agency within the community. Um, you know, is, is 
you know, able to be heard um, and, uh, you know, uh, kind of affect the, the course of, of the direction that we go in. Um, and each person is learning by doing. So um, they're working on meaningful projects, um, you know, not just kind of like trying, like solving already solved problems. Um, you know, for example, like we actually needed that, you know, that mouse image, <laughs> you know, um, and that's why we still use it today. So, you know, it might have seemed like a small thing, um, but, you know, it was a very important thing. And now, you know, Emily has that, you know, something to point to, um, you know, that's her contribution, you know, and it's a lasting contribution because it is something that we actually needed. Got it right away. <laughs> okay, so um, what's different about uh, the stories of these individuals? Um, you know, everybody came in from uh, different entry points. Um, so, you know, no two people are alike. Um, you know, in India, for example, you know, did not use, you know, the sugar desktop environment or any of the activities, you know, when, when he was growing up, um, but came in through Google Summer of Code, Ibium, you know, received one, you know, the one laptop per child computer. Uh, you know, Nathan came in through it, uh, you know, through his teacher, through myself. Um, Emily came in through Google Code. And so there's like, you know, people come, you know, to uh, software, you know, pedagogy to, uh, from all sorts of different uh, walks of life. You got it. Um, okay, so how did I get into in, involved in Sugar Labs and myself? Um, so, uh, you know, um, I mean, I first I, I became really frustrated with my computer, which at that time was a Mac uh, computer, um, and uh, I asked myself a simple question, you know, like why is my computer telling me what to do? <laughs> um, and uh, at that time, I didn't know that there was any other option. Um, but then um, I did spend some time and I did some research. And I discovered free software, um, mainly on the fsf.org and gnu.org pages. Um, and at that time, I was um, taking a class uh, called Music in Education, or yeah, a suite of classes called Music in Education. We were always asking the question, what are the implications for X in music education? So like whatever it was. Um, and uh, so when I discovered free software, it was easy to plug in that into that X. You know, what are the implications for free software in music e education, obviously, but also um, education in general? And my conclusion was there are profound implications for education here. I mean, you know, I think that the the freedom to study the source code, that just seems like such a no-brainer to me um, that I'm s surprised that it's not more, you know, uh, you know, advocated by more educators. Um, and, uh, you know, but not just that, um, but, you know, the freedom to, to remix the source code, because, like, how do you really know something unless you spend some time, uh, you know, playing around with it you know, making it your own. Um, so, you know, for these reasons, um, you know, I wanted, but at that time it was mainly theoretical. So, you know, it's like theoretically, you know, free software has profound implications for education. Um, but, um, and I was lucky enough that uh, Walter Bender, the one of the co-founders of One Laptop Per Child and Sugar Labs was giving a talk um, because I did, you know, in the course of my research, 
you know, discover sugar labs. And I was like, wow, you know, um, in my mind, you know, this is, uh, you know, theoretically very sound, you know, that, you know, people would learn uh, if they have the, the freedom to, you know, study the source code, share it, you know. Um, but um, I hadn't seen, you know, very many people actually, you know, applying those freedoms to uh, teaching and learning um, other than Sugar Labs. And so I wanted to see his talk, um, and I saw his talk, and, you know, one of the things that really struck me is he was mentioning that, you know, when they started, there was, like, nearly zero students, uh, you know, working on the code base itself. Um, but there was a, a point that they reached where 50% of the contributions um, to, you know, the sugar desktop environment and the various activities were, uh, were made by the students themselves. And I was like, there, there it is, you know. <laughs> um, you, know uh, you know, the proof of the theory. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, you know, I, I put this slide up here. Um, I've given uh, talks, you know, um, on what I call a tale of two classrooms. Um, I even wrote an, a, an article in the Free Software Foundation Bulletin about this. Um, um, it's, uh, you know, basically what I just said. But on the left, you see, you know, if you can imagine, in a in a typical classroom where they're they're using proprietary software, someone raises their hand. And it's like, how does this work? You know, the the teacher can only like shrug, and say like, you know, I don't really know, and there's not really a great way to find an answer. I mean, you can observe like how it works, you know, just by seeing the surface. Um, whereas in a free software classroom where you know the the tooling is free software, it's like a curious student can raise their hand and say like, I wonder how this works, and Perhaps the, you know, the teacher doesn't know um, exactly, but uh, the teacher can say, well, you know, the source code is available, you know, and there's a group of developers, and you can become part of the community, you know. So, um, um, in my mind, that's the ideal classroom, and uh, you know, at Sugar Labs, that's basically what we have all online. That's one way to, to put it, yes. <laughs> yeah, bravo, wow. <laughs> you passed the test. Um, yeah, and so, you know, this is, this is a free software classroom right here. You know, everyone's using <laughs> one laptop per child laptop, um, which is running the Sugar desktop environment. Um, you know, um, this is kind of an older, photo, but, you know, I've traveled the world, and, and many of these uh, computers are still used around the world. Um, uh, at one of the classrooms I'm in charge of, you know, they're not these little green laptops, but we do have, you know, some, uh, you know, ThinkPads that are running, you know, well, running Triskel mainly. <laughs> and, and Triskel has a version that has sugar on it. You want to say in sense? Yeah. <laughs> One, two, or three, everyone. Yes. You could you could not ask Microsoft for this feature, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so um, what's uh, one of the other uh, main components of our approach? So. Um, uh, you saw Cynthia Solomon in one of the, the first slides. Um, uh, she and uh, Seymour Papert um, are the co-creators of the Logo programming language. Um, and Seymour Papert in particular, if I'm not mistaken, you know, spearheaded um, this idea of constructionism. So what is constructionism? Um, you can think of it as learn, learning by doing. Um, 
Uh, so if you think of, you know, um, let's call it instructionism as the idea that, you know, knowledge is transferred, you know, from one individual through a, to another, um, uh, constructionism is the idea that, you know, rather than, you know, being transferred one, from one person to another, um, it is uh, constructed, you know, by the student. So um, it's like, yeah, you can watch a lecture, you know, you can watch, you know, music blocks running on here, um, but, you know, the the one way to like really learn how it works is to you know create programs in it. You know the way to learn you know JavaScript or Python or whatever is to you know to actually make some some programs. And I think that was one of the things um, that um, I thought was really great about you know the the panel that Lance did, um, where you know um, everyone in that program was talking about how you know their learning moment was, you know, when, you know, they had to, uh, you know, solve a, a meaningful problem, a difficult problem. And uh, at Sugar Labs, we, you know, um, we've got a lot of issues. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, we guide people through, you know, how to solve those, those issues. Got it. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's many different levels to this. I mean, one is, uh, so um, I was just at actually a constructionism conference. Um, so this is a conference of, of instructors that are really passionate about you know, project-based learning, um, constructionism in particular. And it struck me that, you know, one, you know, actually the organizer was kind of lamenting that, you know, uh, a lot of students and teachers will show him a Scratch project, which is another visual programming language, and he's like, you know, show me a Scratch project that has not, that I haven't seen before. <laughs> um, and I was like, hmm, that's really interesting because in, you know, in music blocks and, uh, you know, for example, there's, uh, I don't know. I mean, I came up with a list just the other day. Just It took me like 10 minutes to do of 40 projects that have not been made. <laughs> you know, I could probably come up with like, you know, 400, 500, um, you know, in an hour. Uh, you know, so you could be the first person to make, you know, someone's made a one-string guitar. Um, no one's made a six-string guitar in music blogs. You, you know, no one's made a flute. You know, you can make a virtual flute. You know, there's all sorts of things that you can do. And, and we want, you know, you know, it, the kids, right, who are working on this to basically be the ones that invent, you know, and have that sense of, like, you know, I had an idea. I didn't know exactly how I was going to get from A to B. You know, I ran into a problem. I got stuck. You know, um, I joined the, you know, our make, the Sugar Labs Matrix channel. I, I asked, you know, some of my peers. Um, I pub published my work, you know, I got some feedback, um, you know, one of the, the mentors, you know, on the channel, you know, gave me, uh, you know, did some tweets. I'm the first one to do this. Yes. I don't know what uh, you just said. <laughs> um, you're welcome to uh, to try and get <laughs> get as far. I, I mean, the answer really is is yes. I mean, it, you know, you might have to get really involved to, to do that. Um, you know, you might find that there's some samples, you know, of sounds that you need. You know, but there's ways to add those samples and things like that. So it's interpreted. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is all JavaScript. It's all. Yep. 
Yeah, you're still awake. <laughs> oh yeah, so um, we're really proud. You know, I, I mentioned that that number. You know, fifty percent of uh, you know patches. You know, um, you know, being made by the kids. Um, uh, this was, screenshot was just taken like yesterday, I think. Um, so this is music blocks in particular. You know, two hundred and twenty-one contributors. Um, I was looking at a, a comparable project that's actually been along uh, around longer, you know, and it was like 60 or something, you know. So, you know, we we certainly like uh, invite, you know, people um, to make, you know, different contributions, you know, however big or small, you know, and we give them credit for it, you know. We allow them to be the ones that get their their code merged into the. Um, into the main code base. Um, yeah, so this is the Q and A time. So, yes. That brings me to the last slide. <laughs> um, yeah, your small donation makes a big difference. <laughs> um, so uh, the best way to find um, where to uh, donate is to go to our website, which, by the way, is uh, a big Jekyll site. And so I've had to learn um, <laughs> Jekyll <laughs> in order just to like, you know, run the website. Um, but if you go to www.sugarlabs.org and you go to the bottom, um, there's a li list of different links and one says, uh, you know, donate. Uh, it'll bring you to our wiki page. Um, you can, you know, mail us a check. There's an address where you can do that. Um, you can use uh, PayPal and we are on the, uh, uh, the PayPal plan or whatever you call it. We're, we're like an approved nonprofit with them where they don't take uh, as much money, if any money, you know, out of the transaction. Um, you can donate through Facebook, but we are at Fossey, and I don't know how many people want to do that. Um, and we'll have more ways of donating in the future, but that's kind of like where we're at right now. Um, but I think we're... <laughs> Okay, so uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, again, if you have any questions, you can contact me. There's my email address. There's uh, my handle on Mastodon. Um, and that's a JMP number. <laughs> um, so you can text it, call it, and that's the official Sugar Labs number right now. Thank you so much.